Hey guys, today's video is about polar alignment of a Nexstar 4 slash 5SE mount. There seems to be a lot of confusion regarding this and I want to clarify it and also show you a bunch of tips that'll make it really easy for you and improve your seeing and your astrophotography with it. See, I have the uh, tripod for the uh, 4 slash 5 SE and this is the, uh, the wedge system that they have. That direction is Polaris. That's where the North Star is. North Celestial Pole is right there beside it. And as you can see, if you look at the mount, there is a front facing north side leg even though it's not marked like the CG4. Basically the fork arm is going to be coming up like this towards the angle of Polaris, and then the scope will be pointed in the direction of Polaris, or rather the North Celestial Pole, depending on how accurate you want to be. But this is what it's supposed to look like. This should answer your question. Um, scope this way. If anybody argues with you on which way this wedge is supposed to be faced, think of it that way. Now, the fork arm pointed this way, single fork arm, and the scope rotated that way, you can easily see how your southern positioning makes sense. It follows your right ascension. And when you're looking at the north side of this, it's obviously a tighter circle. And that would also apply to the uh, southern hemisphere in the opposite direction. But the hinge is going to be pointing towards the north celestial pole. And, uh, what you're going to do from here because you have no polar alignment scope and you can't see through this obviously especially with scoping all the mount and all that stuff on it is you've got your front leading leg and you'll want to put a compass point on the ground facing true north now you can do that with an iphone and uh in your settings you, i'll show you that also you can you can switch to uh true north rather than magnetic north. And put your front leading leg on that position and then put you another mark down about here or so or farther back. Pull some string or whatever it is that you have or a straight line of a sort. Take these back legs one and two and you'll have a position here measure across if these back legs are equal distance it should be fairly approximated from there uh, pretty simply you just uh, make sure you're level but this is exactly how the uh, the mount itself will be positioned and that's been a topic of confusion for a lot of people and I know I'm 100% right on this, so uh, let's move on to the next part of the video. Okay, so now we're on to illustrations because I got rid of this scope and mount a while back. But I'll show you in some drawings here. Uh, what you'll do is you'll attach the mount to the tripod and the telescope to the uh, mount and point the uh, telescope directly straight up towards the zenith. And we're not gonna use the index markers and that's led to a little bit of confusion. The index markers are for what's known as EQ auto align and it really is poor. It, it, I've had no luck with it at all. Maybe you will, but I don't recommend using that method. What I do recommend doing is following this step which is put the scope directly straight overhead towards the zenith and then adjusting the tilt plate to your latitude and by doing that you should be roughly pointed towards the north celestial pole okay so now you got the scope positioned properly you're going to go into your alignment modes and for uh, us guys in the northern hemisphere you'll go to EQ North Align and choose two star 
align. And when you choose your two stars for your alignment, make sure that there's a lot of separation in them. And a really important thing to do, which is a mistake people make, is make sure that they're both positive in declination or both negative in declination. That's really important. Um, these They have to be really far spread apart for the uh, system to get really good tracking. So follow the steps for the two star alignment in the EQ mode. And then you'll go into wedge align. Now wedge align is done after that alignment. And what it's going to do when you select wedge align is the scope is going to actually move in a direction that it thinks Polaris is, North Celestial Pole. And you're not going to touch anything. You're going to let it do what it does. And when it stops, don't use the controller. Use the actual latitude adjustment scale and just ease it up or down until you have Polaris in view and then lock it and then you're going to repeat the two star line one more time this is the most critical part of the alignment process and this will get you the best results I'm, I'm pretty certain of that uh, I've run it every kind of way imaginable and I get really good results this way Something I noticed a lot of people doing was replacing the uh, tilt adjustment with a piece of all thread like this and um, wing nuts. It's a whole lot more accurate than the uh, stock one. It'll help you out in the long run if you plan on keeping it around. It's also very important that you go onto page 22 of the manual and you can download it if you've lost your copy. Read page 22 and page 23 about anti-backlash. This is really important. Uh, because this mount suffers from a lot of backlash and it's something that you're going to have to be scientific with. You're going to have to play around with it. And uh, when you get that set right, you should notice a whole humongous improvement in the, uh, the tracking. And it's going to be different with each unit. Um, they can come right out of the box, actually have more backlash than another one. Uh, two brand new telescopes and they can be completely different. So... You're going to have to experiment with that, but I recommend reading page 22 and page 23. There's a common mistake, and it's, it's a really critical one, is the uh, tracking rate. If you look on page 20 of the manual, you'll notice that you have solar, lunar, and sidereal. You need that on sidereal for uh, long exposure, deep sky photography. You'll also notice uh, under your utilities the go-to approach. And um, basically what that does is it allows you to choose which direction the telescope mount will uh, start rotating to find a uh, given object that you put in the, from the database. The biggest advantage is in, in the anti-backlash and that's something you're going to have to play with and experiment with. But I apologize for using a lot of stock photos in this video, but I'm pretty certain I got my point across. And, um, what I told you is, is the way that I got the most accurate alignment out of it. Um, I still wouldn't expect much out of the next star mount as far as deep sky astrophotography, um, especially with a high focal ratio telescope like what comes with it. Um, 30 seconds is, is pushing it. It's, uh, but you can, um, you can combine enough exposures at 30 seconds to get really decent results. Um, it just puts you having to stack a whole lot more photographs than you would if, say, you could get three to five minutes um, for a total of two to three hours, which is generally what people run. Um, I really hope this video helped. Um, I'm sorry that I saw a lot of the equipment from it and uh, couldn't show you an actual physical demonstration, but I'm sure this was helpful. And uh, I wish you the best of luck, and as always, clear skies.